Good afternoon. This is Krista King Oak, Youth Services Consultant with the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, 35 Art Workshops in 60 Minutes, with Jesse Griffith, Teen Librarian at the Independence Branch of the Kenton County Public Library. Just a reminder that if you have any audio questions or in need of technical assistance, I will be monitoring the chat pod. Please let me know there. Or you can try the audio wizard up in the top menu bar of your screen. We will also be taking questions throughout today's webinar. So please feel free to put those into the chat pod and we will get to them periodically throughout the recording. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available within one week of the live session. Slide PDF will also be available at the end of today's webinar. With that, I'm going to turn the webinar over to our presenter, Jesse Griffith, Teen Librarian at the Kenton County Public Library Independence Branch. Take it away, Jesse. Hi, everybody. Um, can everybody hear me? I apologize if there's any weird background. I'm in the IT office of our library because uh, we're basically a cube farm. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started on this because there's a lot of information here. Um, why did that not work? Okay, so here is some quick backstory on what's been the art club I've done for the past few years over the summer at my library branch. Um, it started from I wanted to do something that was like an every week, um, and I just started using the Remind service to text people about upcoming programs. So that's where Spontaneous Wednesdays came from. And what I found, Spontaneous Wednesdays was a thing where I was just kind of like, I'll let you know on Monday what we're doing. Every time will be fun. And what I found was when I asked, what do you want to do this week, they always said art. They always said craft. When I did, when I sent out messages, this is what we're doing this week, they always came to the art ones. They always came to the craft ones. And not as much the other stuff that I was doing. Um, so I decided to turn that into just an art club. And I chose Wednesday afternoon because, as we all know, Wednesday nights in a lot of communities are church nights. But there are a lot of churches that are kind of on their way or next, excuse me, next door to the library. So I wanted to hit a lot of, especially the middle schoolers, especially the new middle schoolers, on their way to church or to hit kind of a different, I like to experiment with time spots. So every summer there is a flyer that has all of the dates on it. This was last summer's art club workshop. Um, and each one has an individual flyer. I use the same font for these. I use the same color schemes. And that art club logo was created for me from a graphic designer friend. So all of the art club flyers are all branded together under art club. So one of the things about art club is that it's very much art workshop. This is not an art class. I am not a teacher. I have no art teaching background. I just like messing around with art supplies. Um, so a lot of it is it's more of a workshop model where there are supplies and a very minimal amount of explanation or instruction. Um, now, one thing I found was I have a lot of kids that show up late to things or show up at different times. So what I needed was I needed some scrap paper, and I did need something that they could look at while I'm doing a million different things, something that they could quickly look at to say this is what we're doing to get them started. So I started using, I started creating an art club workbook every summer. That's what's on the right there. That's also my Instagram if anybody wants to add me real quick. Um, so those are actually cactus drawings I did in there. So the workbook works really well for any time someone asks me, like, how do you draw this or how do you do that? I can try to sketch it out really quickly. 
in their workbook. I am not a very good artist or drawer, so it looks like this a lot of the time. Um, and I always, I want them, I want to try to bring an element of planning into it and, and thinking things through. So that's why you'll look, and if anybody wants to see a full art workbook, um, my email will be at the end of this, and I can send you that PDF if you'd like. Um, there's always an element of, you know, test out color combinations on these pages, test out ideas on these pages here. Um, all of the workbooks stay at the library all summer because most teens I do not trust to keep track of something all summer long. Um, but they're welcome to take them with them at the end. And some kids will just use whatever workbook is there, and some kids will like look around and find their specific workbook every year. Okay. Art club is also for sharing. I don't. I purposefully don't buy enough like scissors, pencils, that kind of thing, so that they have to talk to each other, you know, and actually communicate with kids who they are not already friends with. So they have to find things to get along with. And sometimes what I'll do is sit down and draw two different kids or three different kids into a conversation about either what they're working on or anything like that. Um, so it is, it's less expensive when you don't buy a black marker for every, every kid that shows up, but it also is a quick way of making them ask hey, does anybody have a black marker? Okay. Look, sorry, it looks like there's a little bit of lag with the slides. So the, my room setup for Art Club is we have like an octagon-shaped meeting room space. So I set up two very long tables and have them sit all around them. I put... Uh, like brown, basically butcher paper. I tape that down on the table because I have some kids who have not been taught that they don't take a paintbrush full of paint and lay it right down on the table. So that's why I started putting all of the paper down, basically because not every there's a lot of paint on our tables now. <laughs> um, and about every four or five feet, I will put some supplies in the middle. Sometimes, like, there's a, there'll be a workbook at every place, at every seat. And then every four or five seats will be maybe a pile of markers or some paint brushes, all kinds of different things. So that they have some, they are ready to go when they sit down, but I don't have it super set up. Okay, so I am not, this is not sponsored content, uh, but I wanted to say if you are not using the Dick Flick website, I love using this one. Um, you can buy classroom collections of things. So you, before I was using Dick Flick, I would have to do like four or five trips to Michael's to like buy all of their, you know, wooden frames or whatever. But you can buy bulk. They have a lot of bulk discounts on this store. They also, if you look at their, the four educators, there are some free lesson plans there that have all kinds of different art projects for all kinds of different levels. They also have, um, there's a wish list option where you can use that if you're kind of planning out a summer of art workshops, you can put together your whole shopping list. And the one thing that I like about that list, too, is you can make that public. So depending on how you do funding at your library, if you have donations, I feel like it would be very easy to show to your community or to your board or whomever, depending on your situation, hey, these are the supplies that we need for this. Um, so that's Dick Blick. Uh, it's really great. I really like it. 
So one thing that I found is in the same way that when Krista asked you who your favorite artist or your favorite art piece was, you probably drew a blank. So one thing that I find is when I say, hey, just come in and make art, there's a lot of kids that they just they go blank. They don't know what they want to draw. They don't know what they want to make. So what I did was I took one of these. I had this panda bank. So I took the panda bank, and I found a bunch of writing prompts and drawing prompts and even some journaling prompts, and I printed them out, cut them up into little slips of paper, and they go in the panda. Um, so he's the idea panda. And if you noticed in the workbook, there was a thing on the instructions that was, if you run out of ideas or you need them, just use the idea panda. So, and sometimes, so the idea panda is always at the front of the room where everyone can see him and everyone can access him if they need some ideas. And sometimes I'll just wander around with him. Uh, no one has to, you don't have to use the idea that you get you can pull as many ideas as you want. And every so often, I'll add one based on, you know, goofy running joke that we have in the program. Um, or occasionally, because my birthday is in the summer, I think there's one in there that make a birthday present for Jesse. Okay. So then the idea panda was really popular. So I took another one of those animal banks, because for some reason I have a lot of them, and I got collected together a bunch of those, like, weird scientific facts, you know, the ones that are, if you took all of the nerves in your body, it would stretch from here to Central Park, or, like, all of those weird ones. That's not a real one. Um, and I put them in another animal bank, and they had to choose those at random and then draw out that fact, write out that fact on a piece of paper. So for this program, I used a lot of those kind of like Ripley's or National Geographic, like 101 weird fact type books um, and the gel pens that come in the package at Costco that's like 200 for $10 and some paper. So that was that was this illustration program. Um, I think this one, if you are at a library that you are very tied to the summer reading theme, I feel like this one is super easy to set up with. You just get a bunch of space facts or NASA facts, and you can have your own scientific space fact illustration. So, what I do for a lot of these workshops is I have paper or the art club workbook as well as like some nice art paper. Excuse me. I have pencil and then I set out various things and basically tell them to make art till they get bored. So this is, I got paint, I got sponges and plastic cutlery, and this was painting without brushes. I think for this one, I was still using um, the individual tubes of acrylic paint because I would gotten a good deal on them. Uh, but those do not wash out, and our meeting room is carpeted. So I have switched to other kinds of paint. Um, my kids love watercolor palettes, even those cheap $5, like, six-color ones. Um, they were Watercolor palettes were so popular, and watercolor painting is so popular that... I then bought some watercolor tubes of the individual colors and a ton of eyedroppers, which you can get for like, like too gross for really cheap on Amazon. And we did ombre watercolor, where you choose one color or two colors, and you know the more water you add, the lighter the color is, so then you can paint with different shades of the same tube. And I think I brought out gel pens for that, too, to kind of add a little bit of detail. Because I also, I like anything that can be used for multiple workshops. So if I buy watercolor tubes, then we'll have ombre watercolor, but we will also, when you just paint, sometimes just paint with watercolors, or I bring the gel pens out, like, all the time. 
like I just bought some black paper instead of some white paper, and we did on black paper was what it was called. Old magazines, basically all the stuff that we no longer want to circulate for one reason or another, and all, <coughs> excuse me, all the stuff that our friends can't quite sell. That can be collages, but that can also, you get some hole punches, and you can make mosaics with that as well. You can also use the library collection for other things as well. If you get some gel pens, and you get your library Zentangle book, then Zentangles are a program. I'm all about bringing in the collection and having the books that we have already bought instead of paying for some presenter or programmer or art teacher to come in because you already have the books and then you can get circulation. Okay, oil pastels is another one that I bought for specific workshop because my kids specifically requested it and then I bring them out for a lot of other things. They also really like those cheap already um, like Michael canvases that are ready to paint on, those ones that are occasionally t like 10 for $10. Um, I like to wait for those sales, use those coupons, Otherwise, I use um, the canvas boards from Dick Blick because they're a lot cheaper. And then last summer, I made them go outside into our little outdoor space, and, uh, and we did shadow trace drawings. If you look in my Instagram, there is actually a drawing. I was standing there. It was a sunny day, so someone drew me my outline. Um, but we have a lot of in, like interesting textures and shapes in our outdoor space, so we did that. Uh, what paints do, we, do you use with canvas? When I have the canvases, I usually use acrylic paint. Um, they are a pain to clean up, though. What I've started using is getting the giant jugs of tempera paint, T-E-M-P-E-R-A, not like the batter, like the paint. Uh, I may be pronouncing that incorrectly. I like getting the big jugs of a few different colors because then they have to learn how to mix paint. Um, a lot of my kids don't have that color theory background. A couple summers ago, I sat there while one girl's mind was blown at the fact that another girl made green paint by mixing blue and yellow. So I started by, I buy like the big jugs of red, blue, green, I think black and white, and they come with pumps, like a big soap thing. So we use that. If that answers your paint question. You're welcome. Okay, and sometimes I just buy some supplies or get some supplies donated, and then they just make stuff until we run out. Polymer clay is hugely popular with mine. And what I do with polymer clay and with shrinky dinks is I set out a few, um, like, cookie sheets, and then we fill up one cookie sheet, I bake them, and then just kind of keep rotating with a few different cookie sheets. Um, the shrinky dink thing, I know that you can use plastic number six, as well as just buying the packages of Shrinky Dink plastic. Um, I am blessed with more budget than I am storage space. So I prefer to use, to get a very flat package and not have to worry about keeping things up. But if you know people that have a lot of those, um, like fruit or vegetable plastic clamshell containers, then that's an option as well for Shrinky Dink. Um, and for jewelry, I guarantee all of you know someone who is trying to get rid of their jewelry supplies. Because I know when I say, oh, hey, I'll take donations of art or craft supplies, I get all the beads. I get all the wires. Um, so that's, I think jewelry is not only super popular and as an event, as a program, it's 
fun because then you can watch the different kinds of things that they do and then kind of maybe gear that towards a different program. And it can be cheap if you know people. Air dry clay is something I decided to try for the first time last summer because it's cheaper than polymer clay. You can buy a bucket of 25 pounds of air dry clay for about 30 bucks, a little bit less than that. And most teens will use like less than half a pound. I gave them each a pound last year and we had a lot left over. So air dry clay is white and it does take a little while to dry. So that's last summer what I did was one week we sculpted and then I had them put their sculptures on paper plates and I took them down and kept them for until the next week when they came back and painted those sculptures. And that I did use the uh, tempera paint jugs for. Um, this actually worked out really well. I was worried about having people show up new to either one or not show up, but everything evened out really nicely. Um, I will be repeating this next summer, and I'm going to add an element of like found art sculpture with some wires and some different stuff in there, too. Sharpie mugs is one that's like perennially popular. I am not a huge fan of it. Um, because I think it's kind of expensive. The cheapest I've ever found a mug is a dollar per mug and at the dollar store. Um, but you can buy, you can order online from the dollar store in bulk, which is nice. You don't have to just, before I realized that, I was visiting every dollar store in my area and hoping I had enough mugs. Um, but you want to use the oil-based, yeah, the oil-based paint Sharpies and those can be expensive, and like the color combinations can be kind of weird, and you can't really use those for a lot of other events. Um, when I do Sharpie mugs, I have them take the mugs with them, but I've printed out little slips that have the instructions on how to bake them with them. So if anyone is interested in doing Sharpie mugs and needs those instructions, just let me know, and I can send you that rather than you having to like reinvent the wheel. I much prefer using tile toasters rather than the mugs for Sharpie stuff. Um, I also like how many different things you can do with tile toasters. Not only are, there cheap and, are they cheap and they come in a giant box, especially if you have any kind of building reuse or creative reuse around you, that can be a good, inexpensive way to get a bunch of tiles. Um, I've done collage on tile. I've done mosaic on tile. And this was, um, you use regular Sharpies, and you get some rubbing alcohol. And then it makes it look like, it's alcohol ink, basically. It's a cheaper way of doing that. Um, I believe we sprayed these afterwards to have them stick. Um, I also had a bunch of letter stickers. So I'm not sure why. So what we did, what they could do if they wanted to was put the letters down or the numbers down, spell things out, and put the Sharpie ink on top of them and do a little bit of a stenciling activity with that. And they seemed to really like that one. So I, I love a mono print. I love a linoleum block print. These are some of my favorite crafts to do myself. Uh, my kids don't like them. I've tried so many times. They're not interested. Breaks my heart a little bit. Uh, where do you get the piles cheap? Um, we have a lot of those kind of like bargains and buyouts places around Cincinnati. Any kind of, I always think of them as like fell off the back of the truck because they're kind of sketchy stores. But any place that has kind of building reuse, anything like that, you can usually find them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one thing I tried to do that maybe your teens will enjoy it better than mine did, I got some styrofoam plates, which also make really good, really cheap paint palettes. 
but you kind of carve into a pattern into the styrofoam with a pencil and then roll paint over it. Ooh, cups would be good for that too. Um, and then use them almost as a stamp. Like I said, my kids did not like this, which I think is why I'm telling all of you about it, so that I can see it work in other places, um, make cool art, send pictures of it back to me, because I love looking at a mono print. Stamp working, though, did work better for mine. Um, we used fun foam, but you could also cut out pieces of styrofoam cups or whatever for this, too. And then they dipped that in paint or ink and made a pattern on paper with it. And this we just used fun foam and glue for. Okay. So the first summer that I did art club, and you'll see some of these flyers look a little messed up. It's because the fonts I was using on them, Microsoft no longer supports, so I had to change the font family for them. So the first summer I did Art Club, we had, I had a, a lot more vague ideas about things that because our summer stuff at Kenton County is due in February, so in February, I was like, oh, yeah, we'll do self-portraits. We'll do op art. We'll do all these big, vague ideas. Once it got to, uh, I believe, Tuesday, July 21st, I realized that I needed something more specific. So I decided we would do self-portrait stuffies. I found a really basic doll pattern, uh, I believe on Martha Stewart's website, and using different felts and fabric scraps, as well as Sharpies and some other stuff, they made self-portraits of themselves as little dolls. Um, this was also really cool because I had a kid that summer who was going through a lot of gender identity stuff, so it was really like empowering and great to see this teen use this art project to make their self-portrait stuffy look like what they wanted to look like and reflect that journey they were on that summer. Um, and I think especially because I used Frida Kahlo for that flyer, that really reflects it. Because, I mean, that's what art is all about in general, right? It's using it to kind of figure out our place in the world and how we want to be reflected. And Hand lettering I did a long time ago. This one I did bring someone in because I did not know it. When I bring a person in, I don't always use someone who is a traditional library program person. I like to use local working artists. I usually have them talk a little bit about how their background and how they became a working artist to try and bring in like a, basically a secret career day talk um, because my teens will not come if I was like come talk to artists about how they do their job but if I have artists come in for a workshop then I can have them talk about their kind of day-to-day -day work lives with that this one I did do registration for I don't I almost never do anymore um, I don't know how successful I would consider this particular workshop what but this was a few years ago, and hand lettering is so popular now that I feel like if I did this again, or if you guys did this again, or if you did it with um, adults, there's potential for this to be incredibly popular. Even if, it, if you don't want to have someone come in and do it, there's a lot of hand lettering worksheet, worksheets that you can print offline and get some graph paper yourself. I think there's a lot there's a lot of potential with this one. That's why I included it. We did paper marbling because at every paint program I had kids just mixing paints together and swirling them around and paper mar that's basically all paper marbling is. There are a million instructions on how to do paper marbling all over Pinterest. I would suggest and recommend 
looking, if you have not done paper marbling before, I would recommend using the method where the paint uh, sits on top of water rather than on shaving cream. Shaving cream, it used a lot more shaving cream than I thought it was going to, so we kind of ran out. Made their meeting room smell real weird because um, I got, like, minty shaving cream. And it you can only use that shaving cream once. So it was just not the best. They had fun with it, but if I was going to do this again, I would not use the shaving cream method. I would use the water or another similar method to do paper marbling. Side-eye can be expensive, but it is really fun. It's a good end of summer or end of July kind of thing to do. Um, some people will have the kids bring their own shirts. Because I have a lot of kids who they or their parents don't quite pay attention to each individual week's project. I didn't want anyone to be left out. I just bought a bunch of, like, men's undershirt, like, multi-packs at Target. Um, and I went to Target because I drive past it. If I drove past a Walmart or whatever, just men's undershirt multi-packs. Um, you can buy at Michael's Tulip Makes a Tie-Dye Party Kit. Um, that has everything you need in it. And I just set it all out. We did use our outdoor space for this. And I think I bought a bunch of Ziploc bags, and they took the shirts with them with instructions on what to do next. Um, this summer I will have shirts, but also if there are any left over, I will have socks as well because we're going to do sock puppets again this summer. Um, this is another request from my team. They love sock puppets. Sock puppets are pretty great. Um, what I do is I usually use glue, some felt, some yarn, some Sharpies, buttons, um, one of those big bags of googly eyes, and just white, and I think maybe some black socks. It's, this is something they, requ they requested hugely last summer. And then we did sock puppets at some other program, and this is just a fun moment. Uh, one of my kids comes up to me and is like, how do you like this sock puppet? And the sock puppet on the, like the part on the arm, the like leg part of the sock, there were all these flames on it. So I asked like, oh, I like your sock puppet, but why is he on fire? And they looked at me <laughs> and said, Oh, he's not on fire. It's a Guy Fieri sock puppet. So I just love the creativity of all of the different kinds of sock puppets that get made and the silliness around it. Um, if anyone is as aggressively a 90s stereotype as I am, I have made my kids watch Stipple and Ollie, that old MTV show with the two sock puppets. Um, it is also on YouTube. Um, some were more entertained by others than, than that. But there, there is a nice uh, visual component to that as well. DIY quote books is how I learned that people aren't taught how to use a ruler. Because first I thought it was just my kids. And then I have a friend who is an engineering teacher at a local high school. And she said the same thing. So the idea behind this was I had some card stock, and they had to cut it to a specific size, and then papers that they could choose the different papers that they wanted in the quote book. And then I pulled a bunch of our, like, you know, quotation, like, those big, thick books. What is it? Like the Roger, Roget, uh quotation books so that they could choose different ones from that, things of funny quotes. Um, they liked that part, but like I said, they did not know how to cut something down to a specific size based on a ruler. So I feel like there's another project we may be doing in the future, kind of designed specifically to secretly teach them how to do that. Paper lanterns was something I did a couple summers ago um, based on, I was looking for, I wanted to pull in a little bit more art history 
and also contemporary art to art clubs. So it wasn't just process, but it was also about works of art that were out there. And I found this artist. Um, she's had some pieces pretty local, like Indianapolis, Cincinnati. Um, this is actually that cube in this photo is a laser cut steel cube with a light inside. So all of these images around, that's all shadows and light. Uh, her work is really gorgeous. I super, even if you ignore everything else I've said, please look up her art. It's really cool. So what we did to try to imitate this was I got some heavy black cardstock and some push pins and some key lights. So they would cut design, like, ah, use the push pins to create holes and designs in the cardstock that would shine through. Um, some were more successful than others. I think this is a workshop that needs a little bit more work on my planning in. I also tend to stay away from having X-Acto knives or razor blades in my program because I have a lot of teens who have issues with cutting and I don't want to give them too much of a temptation, honestly. Um, just because I can't, there's too much going on, I can't keep track of all of the X-Acto knives. So that's just, for me personally and my team, I tend to stay away from anything that might need, need an X-Acto knife. So here's one of those Dick Flick lesson plans that we used this as a workshop a couple summers ago. So it, this is a blurry PDF, but you can kind of see there's a materials list. There's all, like some preparation. There's grade levels. There's all kinds of different stuff. My teens liked this one actually a lot better than I thought they would. They had a lot of fun with the making these sculptures. They all turned out really cool. We painted some wooden beads. There was wire involved. Um, I, think, I feel like this one would be really easy to do with uh, even less expensive materials than this as well. The window art was also a Dick Flick lesson plan. Um, there, it's colored acetate that you cut into shapes and then put on, stick onto uh, some plastic that already has adhesive on it and then cut that out into shapes. So the original summer that I did art club, my thought was the last two weeks, well, the very last week was going to be a gallery show, and the week before that was going to be graphic design where we would all create advertisements for the gallery show. Graphic design is too big a concept for me to teach a bunch of middle and high school students in the last, in, in just two hours. So some posters were made and we did some different things, but I, what I would do, if I was going to do this again, I would try to either narrow it down to a specific project rather than graphic design. Or what I would do would be maybe even do this as something for Teen Tech Week and turn it into multiple sessions of graphic design stuff. Ooh, plaster of Paris is a good idea for that, Krista. I like that, rather than the styrofoam. Because I did cut that styrofoam into individual pieces and got styrofoam all over the place. So like I said, I the original year I did this, my idea was the last one would be a gallery show. Uh, I decided to do that because I do a photography contest every year in January. Some of you may have gotten the email about voting. Um, and that is a really popular, it's a popular contest and a popular gallery show. So I thought maybe replicate that over the summer with the art that the kids had been creating. Um, that did not work 
actually super well. There were some kids that showed up. Um, not that many people came to look at the art. I think because of the time, I think because there was not a contest part involved with it. So the gallery show was a thing I only did the first summer for the last one. So what I do now for the last event every year is a crafty free-for-all where we just, I put out all the supplies and they make all kinds of whatever they want. This is really great for not only using things up, it's great for, because you never know who's going to show up in the, on the last week, especially of the summer, I feel like. And this is always the week before school starts. And also, I like doing the crafty free-for-all because then I watch what they make and what they use and then I can kind of get those ideas for next summer. Um, so this is also make something ugly because, and you can see this little guy down here, he says, I'm ugly on purpose. I'm a creativity exercise. So a lot of people, when they want to make something, they get all caught up in the anxiety of making it the perfect thing, making it look good making it look exactly like what's in the book or on the flyer or on the Pinterest page. When you tell someone to make something ugly on purpose, it takes a lot of that anxiety away because they can just kind of say, like, I'm just going to make something crazy. Let me just put everything together. You can't see, but I'm shaking my hands around when I say that. So making something ugly on purpose is really freeing and really fun. And then anything else that's left over, because like I said, not blessed with the most storage space here at the independent branch. And personally, I'm not a fan of, oh, well, I have three mugs left and two of this left. It just, uh, I'm shaking my head. <laughs> Frustrating for me. So what I do and have done for the last few years is I gather all of that stuff together, also any of my coworkers that are retiring, any of my friends that are moving. Last summer when I was moving, basically anything that people don't want in their house anymore, instead of having them donate it to the thrift store, have them Marie Kondo to you. And I had about 100 adults come through this program and take all of this stuff off my hands and also donate some things that I've then added to things um, and done other crafts with. This is a really great community event to share supplies with the rest of the people in your community. And I always like the occasional thing that is sort of centered on teens, but the rest of the community can take a part in as well. And that's definitely this free art supply free store. At Crafty Free For All last summer, I put up three pieces of paper. These three, with these three titles, and had them all come over and write down the things on the wall, what was their favorite, what was their least favorite, and if they have any ideas for next year. And you can see they all wanted sock puppets. And none of them liked the shadow art. When I asked, it was because it was too hot outside. <laughs> um, so basically, my next art club was, my next summer was planned last August because I had all of these ideas from them. Um, you, some of you may have heard me talk before. I can't really get a teen advisory board off the ground. I don't get very many usable program ideas from my team. But this was a really great way to build buy-in, to build community, and also to get their ideas for what they wanted. 
And here's the reminder. You know, lots of people like art. I think one of the reasons why my art club is so popular is because as there's less and less art instruction in schools. And art club, like all as one thing, looks, it looks legit to parents, basically. So the parents will bring them. So it happens to be popular. But you know, that's not a universal. Next summer, art club could be super not popular at me or for me. Or someone else could try it, and it's not. Or sometimes I have kids who are dropped off at art club and they don't want to make art. They just want to hang out with their friends. And I think it's really important for us who work with teens, I mean, really who work with anyone, but especially teens, like, we're not just event planners. We have the events because that's how we can bring them in, but we're serving teens. Um, this is actually a slide from another presentation of mine. I've got Rory and Jess in there because Rory and Jess love libraries. They're from Gilmore Girls. They loved reading. I don't think either one of them would have come to a library event, but the fact that those that they read a lot, they're still being served by library services, even if they don't want events. Um, and Jane on the right there, honestly, that's all most of my kids want. They just want a place to hang out with each other that's not school. So don't be so hard on yourself. And let's have share time. These are my contact information. If you don't, if you try the Kenton Library email and you don't get a response, please try the other one. But opening it up for questions now. I'm looking at the chat. Oh, yeah, the workbook is um, I use the booklet creation feature in Publisher. And it is, so if you look at it, each week has kind of a two-page spread. And on the left will be some basic instruction. And then on the right is sort of some blank pages. It's hard to describe. I will um, try to have Krista send one out so, so that it's easier to figure out. Sorry, I'm not giving the best description of it. Um, it's be, I made zines a ton in high school and college. Again, 90s stereotype. So I use that same idea to make these. Thank you. Does anybody have a favorite or one they're super specific that they want to try? So the question is, how long do I allow the teens to work? My each workshop is two hours, so we start pretty promptly at three o'clock. I try to not. I ha, do have a group of kids that show up super early. They help me set up, and they work basically either until they get bored or about fifteen to twenty minutes before five o'clock when I make them all help clean up. I have also actually gone out into the library found kids who have left and made them come back to clean up because everybody cleans up together. Um, what do I do if parents or younger siblings ask to, ask to participate? I say no. Um, for younger siblings, I say, hey, over in the children's department, we have a ton of activities. For older siblings, I say, or for parents or anyone who is older, I say, we do a ton of craft programs for adults. This is a teens only space. Every great once in a while, there'll be a situation where one of my teens can't come unless they have a younger sibling with them, but we work that out ahead of time. I am hardcore about my age limit. You cannot come before you are done with fifth grade, and you cannot come af after the August after you graduate. Um, Hand lettering, what I did was I had someone come in and run the workshop. If I was going to do hand lettering again, I would do some research and find some. 
there's a lot of worksheets out there and workbooks, and I would probably copy out a bunch of those and have some fancy pens again. Ooh, Sandy, can you talk more about exploding books? I'm curious about that. And Patricia, I have not tried the rolling marbles around with paint. That's on my list of if we ever get rid of the carpeting in the meeting room, so I want to try some messier paint programs. So like pouring paint or the marble painting or any kind of splatter painting. Those are my like, once we get rid of the carpeting and things are easier to clean ideas. Uh, I think I got everybody's question there. Ooh, I will have to Google that. Yeah, I think the marbling for younger kids or if you are at a library where you have smaller or shorter programs, um, I've found that anything less than two hours, just where we're located, I don't have a lot of parents who will come, quote, unquote, all the way out just for one hour for a program for their teen. So, but I think if I have like an hour, just a program that's like an hour after school, I feel like the marbles would work really well with that. I apologize if I talk super fast too. Sometimes it can be hard to judge in uh, a room by myself. Yes. In about a week, they'll be, it'll be available. I am impressed. Okay, All right. Again. This is... Oh, sorry, Krista. Oh, no. I was just saying hello. No, I was going to say again, no. if anybody has any questions, just please let me know. Shoot me an email. Okay, feel I'm free to now. please go ahead. <laughs> so go ahead and keep the questions and comments coming. They are great. Um, I saw Sheila ask about the slides, so I want to move into our wrap-up screen. That way you can download the slides if you need to go um, before we uh, finish up here. But they will also be available in the KDLA Archives webinars uh, website with the recording. And Krista, can we send? Can you send out or make available if I send you the PDF of the work of our workbook too? Absolutely, we can put all of those resources in the same place on the website. Awesome. I will make a note to get that to you then. Fantastic. And um, if I do want to a physical one. I can mail you one too. Just send me an email. Okay. Sorry, Krista. Oh no, you're fine. I just wanted to bring everybody's attention to a couple of archives webinars since we've talked a lot about um, just teen programming in general, social, emotional competencies, um, just various foundational philosophies around teen programming. So I'm going to type in the chat box a link to two different webinars. Again, they are available on KDLA's website. First one is called You Can Homago 2, Connected Learning and 21st Century Teen Library Services. This was recorded um, with uh, students at the University of Maryland last February, almost to the exact date. Um, bonus points, if anybody knows what the acronym Homago, H-O-M-A-G-O -O stands for. Jesse, do you happen to remember that? <laughs> um, Hanging out, making art, I don't know what the last two are. That is very close and a good adaptation for today's webinar. Hanging out, messing around, and geeking yes. out. Yes, that's right. And then I'm also putting a link to a webinar we did at the beginning of this month, just a couple of weeks ago, with Blaine Borden from the Lexington Public Library called Castle in the Sandbox using social and emotional learning to begin, enhance, or defend your teen services program. And I saw Blaine give this talk at 
um, the Youth Services Retreat, and it was really great. So I super recommend that one. All right. Uh, Jesse and I will stick around uh, to the top of the hour in case anybody wants to chat some more. Um, otherwise, just a few quick reminders as we wrap up today's webinar. Uh, this webinar and all KDLA continuing education is made possible in part by the Library Services and Technology Act funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. If you enjoyed today's webinar and you enjoy getting high quality continuing education experiences from KDLA, please take a couple of seconds before leaving to complete the IMLS survey that is at the bottom of the screen next to the chat box. Just a reminder that while you're in the midst of summer reading planning, KDLA has a website for that. You can find all of the presentations and handouts that were at the Youth Services Retreat mentioned earlier, as well as tips from the Collaborative Summer Library Program, that is CSLP, as well as statewide partnerships. If there's something you would like to see on that website, or if you have something you would like to share, please email me at krista.king oak at ky.gov or kdla.youth at gmail.com. As always, you can find out about the latest trainings as well as trends and tips from Library World by subscribing to the Kayak Lister. I challenge everybody in today's recording to forward this information to a colleague who may be interested. Every Friday, I send out a digest with news, trends, and tips. Those are available on the archive of KDLA's Youth Services website. As always, you can follow KDLA on social media. Our continuing education department does a fantastic job of posting updates about training and resources. You can find them on Facebook at KDLA CE or on Twitter at KDLA Lib Dev, stands for Library Development. There is that youth services website we talked about in the red arrow pointing to the archive of the Kayak Weekly Digest newsletters. A reminder, you can find more great webinars coming up on KDLA's continuing education calendar. We will have one more teen services webinar next week that is dedicated to that elusive tween late elementary middle school population. So we hope to see you all back for that. Again, the slide PDF is currently available in the bottom left-hand portion of your screen. It will be made available along with the recording uh, within one week of today's date on KDLA's website. A short survey is now available in the survey pod. Click the survey name, then browse to a new window, and it will pop up on your computer. Your responses are extremely important to us for our continued federal funding support. We also encourage those watching the archived recordings to complete the survey. A certificate of attendance will be mailed to you within one week. I want to again thank Jesse Griffith, Teen Librarian with the Kenton County Public Library and Independence for today's fantastic webinar, and thank you all for attending. Take thank care. You. Thanks, everybody. And this is the end of the recording.